I would ask before we continue with the second demonstration of the rock and roll critique sheet that you take a listen to the Choo Choo Chiboogi audio track that's available to you in your audio folder. Please listen to the tune in its entirety and then we will go ahead and talk about the sheet without actually playing it in the back of my narration. The title of the tune, of course, is Choo Choo Chiboogi. The performer is Louis Jordan and his band. Louis Jordan was known as the king of the jump blues during the late 40s and 50s, and he was also one of the two kings of the rhythm and blues, along with the late Louis Prima. Number three on the critique sheet should, of course, be checked R&B, because this is an R&B recording. It was recorded in 1946 once again. The instrumentation consists of a rhythm section that included drums, bass, and keyboard. Once again, no guitar. There was a lead vocal. There is a brass section. There are no strings, no other odd instruments. Once again, let me point out that when you are doing the instrumentation uh, section of the critique sheet, make sure that if there are more than one instrument, such as the trumpet or the saxophone or the trombone, if there are three of those or three of trumpets, three of saxophones, all you have to do is check the word brass and you do not have to describe them individually. Number five, the melodic texture. What do we find in this particular tune? We find primarily and almost only homophonic. We have the lead vocal primarily uh, singing over the band accompaniment, and when the lead vocal disappears, we have an instrumental solo taking its place, but we do not have a place in the tune where it becomes a monophonic or a polyphonic texture. Number six, the harmonic or chord texture is primarily simple. Once again, this is popular music. Number seven, the chord progression has few chords in the progression. Eight, instrumental tone color. What electronics are used? Unlike the first tune, Good Rockin' Tonight, we will hear reverb in this recording. Now this was made possible because while this was a rhythm and blues band, Louis Jordan had one of the most popular bands in rhythm and blues, therefore he had a relatively larger record company that he was working for, and they did have reverb available in the studio. Make sure you have listened to the tune once again for the form or structure. Make sure you're counting the bars. There is an introduction to this tune. Make sure you start your count when you hear the vocalist come in. The former structure of this tune is not the 12 bar blues as it would seem at the beginning, but actually changes into a verse refrain. The verse refrain is only evident once you get through two sections of counting because you will discover that the second section has a different number of bars from the first. The first section, and these are alternating sections, is a 12 bar. The second section, on the other hand, where we hear the term choo choo chaboogi sung several times, is an 8 bar section. What is also important is that the words in the 12 bar section that alternates with the 8 bar section, the words in the 12 bar section are different in each succeeding 12 bar section. The 8 bar sections are the same words each time, usually revolving around the use of the title of the tune. The alternation of these two sections, which, which have different numbers of bars, and the use of the same words each time in the second of the two alternating sections indicates a verse-refrain form. In the verse-refrain form, the refrain is the same words each time, usually revolving around the main metaphor of the tune, which is usually in the title of the tune. As we move forward through the, uh, through the critique sheet, the type of song in this particular case is a narrative. Uh, the main metaphor is in the title of the tune, Choo Choo Chiboogie, and the allusion of that metaphor is to a train in this particular case. What's more specific to the words is, who is this guy? He refers to his love of trains, to the fact that his friends are all named Mac or Bud. He goes into town to try to find a job, looks at the newspaper, finds that most of the jobs need a skill, therefore he puts the paper back, goes right back to the track, to his love, which are trains. He travels by trains. Well, this guy's a hobo, and that's what the illusion really means. 13, the meter, uh, in this particular case, once again, it is very simple that this is a meter of four. Number 14, the tempo, this is a relatively medium fast tempo. Number 15, the instrumental solos, we have the saxophone in this particular tune. Uh, we also have, as a uh, type of tune, this is a shout tune because the tempo is medium fast or faster. 
Only if the tune were slower and had a white pop type of vocal would we call it a croon. This tune does indeed have call and response between the vocalist and the rest of the brass section in the first part of the vocals. There are breaks in this tune. We only hear them in the last chorus of the tune. And in this particular case, since the rest of the band breaks from its regular rhythm and plays harmonically with the vocalist during the two breaks, which are during the two succeeding refrains, these two breaks would actually be considered homophonic breaks rather than, than the usual monophonic break. There is not an ostinato in this tune. The rhythmic feel is shuffle, but there is a boogie-woogie to it as the piano and the bass do follow with the drummer. There are no changes in meter, tempo, form, or dynamics. There is no stop time in this particular tune, and as far as vocal effects, we do not hear any of the vocal effects that are listed. Other comments to be made about this particular tune are that the 12 bar verses are all in a blues form, while the overall form of the tune are in verse refrain. There is an introduction to this tune as well. Another additional comment would be one that would describe between whom are the call and response, the call from the lead vocalist, the response from the brass section.